this is my patient Tatiana. Tatiana was bitten by a German Shepherd, bit onto her leg. In the process, she fell and injured herself. We examined Tatiana and found that her reflexes were abnormal. Checking her deep tendon reflex, you can see how sensitive she is. I adjusted her C7, went back and rechecked her reflexes to make certain they were normal. Then I adjusted her thoracic spine. I gave her a massage, and in the process, Daphne wanted to join. Daphne enjoyed her massage as well. Then I adjusted Tatiana's low back. This is that case. Tatiana, what brings you in today? Um, so I had a slight fall at work. Daphne, our, our little champion, didn't defend you? It was not Daphne. It was a big German Shepherd. And when you got bit, what happened? Um, I fell. The dog took me to the ground, so... That's not really scary for you. It's very scary. I just feel like I kind of maybe need de-stress. De-stress a little bit. Maybe help the joints. So we're going to do a quick exam on Tatiana and see what she has. One of the things I know about Tatiana is she's very sensitive to the flexor withdrawal reflex. She has a tendency to be sensitive to it. We're going to use this as a comparison for right now. So... Patients with this condition have a decreased ability to inhibit this reflex, and here's what I mean by that. When I stroke this foot and test this leg, this leg should be weak. Push up for me. And it's not. And the same when I do it on the opposite side. When I stroke here, this should be weak. And it's not. So right now we're going to check the C7 level. We're going to do some mobilization of it. We're going to go back and recheck those reflexes to see if they inhibit properly. If that happens, what it tells us is that's the adjustment she needs to help her system calm down. We're going to come back and do the flexor withdrawal reflex on the right, but test the left leg, push up. And it should go weak, and it does. Vice versa on the opposite side. This is Daphne. This is she and she's a little too nervous and skittish to be on her own right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> This should be weak, Go. and it is. This should be weak, and it is. Little one, push out for me. Go. Okay, that is not weak, and it should be. Push out. It means your low back's out too. I'm gonna give you a hug. Okay. I can breathe better now. Yeah. Come down. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. One of the things we attempt to do at the office is calm patients down. And we know we're successful when a patient can breathe better, when they're more relaxed and calm. And that means we got the right segment that was out of place. It also means their balance will be better, their system will function more appropriately, they'll be calmer and more relaxed. One of the things that's taking place in our society is our stress levels are through the roof and it causes the human nervous system not to relax. And in the process we make too many stress hormones. And when we make too many stress hormones, our body ages at a more rapid rate, we can't balance blood sugar levels, it's a harder time losing weight and feeling refreshed and regenerated. So I always try to make certain that our patients are calmer after they leave the visit and that their system is functioning more normally. So how does chiropractic help like manage stress or like it can calm you down. The problem is the stress side is always overactive in our society. So lots of things can activate the peace side. 
exercise, massage, chiropractic, acupuncture, physical therapy, swimming, meditation. But chiropractic does it in a very accelerated rate. So you can feel how you calm down right after the adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. So Tatiana, how are you feeling after the adjustment? Much better. I feel like I can breathe better. I feel like more calm.